of the, the larger possibilities of experience. I mean, if we changed our genome in just this way, or we changed our language in just this way, or we changed our, our um, uh, approach to, to science in just this way, our experience would change and we could be completely ignorant about how that, or mistaken about how that, those changes would occur. And that's just to say this is a horizon past which we can't see. And what's, what's the best way to talk about that horizon and explore it and try to foresee the effects of various changes? Well, I think it's scientific and reasoned discourse. Um, yeah? So I'm, I'm trying to figure out who you disagree with. Uh, and, <laughs> it's, it's uh, a good, and that's a good heuristic. Uh, uh, at first, it might sound like you're sort of assuming a kind of very narrow utilitarian view as the moral truth, saying the right thing to do is what's going to maximize the aggregate sum of uh, pleasant over unpleasant conscious states, and that's what we should do. And then, of course, there you have the problem saying, what about all these other values that people care about? There's been a long debate about this, and it's not just a trivial debate. And then I hear you saying, well, I mean something much more broad than that. I mean flourishing in this broader sense. And anything that you throw at me that sounds like something that would really be worth caring about, my notion of flourishing is going to encompass that. Right. And then I'm wondering, okay, so you're saying we should stand up and fight and care about flourishing broadly defined. Uh, and now I'm wondering who disagrees with you. Uh, I mean, I know that there are some pomo anthropologists who will, who, who will say, who am I to judge the Taliban? But I don't hear a lot of that either in my intellectual circles or in, or, or in public discourse. I mean, one sort of, you know, kind of sociological thought experiment. Can you imagine or can you find a politician in this country who will stand up and say, I don't believe in moral truth? Uh, and, and get elected next time. I mean, I'm not sure you can get away with that in Cambridge, maybe Berkeley, uh, but, but I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'll give you an example. I mean, this is a, what was a very formative experience for me was um, actually Jonathan was at this meeting. We were at a meeting at the Salk Institute, and I gave a short talk giving, making noises somewhat of this sort, and I, at one point in the talk I said, for instance, we know that the Taliban is not a a culture that maximizes human well-being. I mean, this is just, this is one of the wrong, history's wrong answers, and we can admit it, and it's not unscientific to admit it. Uh, and somewhat, someone came up to me at the end of the talk and said, uh, well, how could you ever say that compulsory veiling is wrong from a scientific point of view? And I said, well, it's wrong from a scientific point of view because I think right and wrong relate to human and animal well-being, and forcing women to live in bags is clearly not a way of maximizing well-being. And she said, well, that's just your opinion. And I said, well, okay, let's make it simpler. Let's say we found a culture that was just removing the eyeballs of every third child. Uh, and would you then agree that we had found a culture that was not maximizing human well-being? And she said, well, it would depend on why they were doing it. And I said, okay, well, let's say they're doing it for religious reasons. They have a book which says every third should walk in darkness or some such nonsense. And then she said to me, well, then you could never say that they were wrong. Now, this person had just delivered, this person is now on Obama's Council of Bioethics, one of 13 people advising him on all the ethical implications of you know, science, scientific progress. Um, this person had just delivered a totally lucid lecture on the implications of neuroscience for the law and how she was worried about fMRI technology and lie detection and how this was an invasion of cognitive liberty. Um, and how we could be exposing people to oxy, uh, she was especially exercised that we might be exposing captured terrorists to oxytocin as a way of encouraging greater trust, and that this was a violation of human rights. Okay, so this dichotomy of you we have to be non-judgmental about re removing the eyeballs of children, right, on the one hand, and yet we have to be uh, just burdened by an insane scrupulosity with respect to I oxytocin and Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. This this dichotomy held in balance in one person's brain is something I'm responding to. On the other hand, I'm also responding to all the people in our culture who think you can get morality out of religious prescriptions. So, you know, we, we are now a society that talks not about nuclear proliferation or genocide, but about gay marriage. Uh, and it seems to me if you want to say that gay marriage should be illegal, you should have to make an argument that it causes harm and here is, how it, here is how it causes harm. And yet we're, the, the, the standard of mor our moral discourse now is you don't even have to argue that it causes harm. You just have to argue that it's wrong, full stop. My faith tells me so. My 
my tradition tells me so, the Bible tells me so. There is no argument that has to be made in terms of consequences. And I'm saying we have to steal the ground from under that discourse and say that the only thing that counts is an argument that talks about human flourishing and human well-being. Unless you can tell me how human well-being is undermined by gay marriage, you're not actually talking about morality. I was going to say that goes back to your response to, to John's point about fundamentalist Christians, which your response was different than what I would expect. That it's an empirical question, who is subjectively happier and lives a richer life, fundamentalist Christians or secular atheists? Right. Um, who gives more to charity? Who, who loves their children more? And you know, the evidence is actually kind of mixed. It's a hard question. Right. I thought what you would say is, as scientists, we're going to look at this data, see how it turns out, and then we'll make our, our, our decision. You know, and it could change. It could it could. But but your immediate response was seemingly that you were repelled almost on, on moral grounds above the science about fundamentalist Christians, which is they believe the wrong things, and that in itself is, is is a value that needs to be taken into consideration, which is something I agree with you on, but seems very different from your program of always asking the question subjective well being. Well, well, no, no, it's, it's not subjective. It's not just subjective. It's subjective well being. It, again, it's largely predicated on actually having beliefs that track reality. I mean, how, we need to understand why we're not all dying of the... We, but but really, so, so a lot of reality is a bummer. So, yeah. so you have a system that tracks the truth, and you might end up with people who are pretty miserable. Which, which I'm fine with. I'd, I'd rather be true and, and well, miserable. Well, no, no, but you'd rather, be, you'd rather be true and miserable up to a point. I mean, you can imagine situations... No, no, all the way. <laughs> you, can, you can imagine situations in which you would rather not have complete information if having complete information would paralyze you and get you killed and bereave everyone who cares about you. I mean, you can imagine a situation where, you know, there's no way I was going to escape from this burning building if I actually knew how the odds were stacked against me. But given the fact that I just, I didn't know, I had all the emotional resources and I got out of the building alive. Uh, and there's, so there, there are more global situations which we can imagine where, yeah, having perfect information is not a good thing. And we don't want to. But it, to? it does sound like you're making an empirical claim that there, it is very possible that there's one untrue belief that would make everybody happier and that would cause very little misery in the world. Right? There is, yeah. So the little yeah. green man in my closet you know, sings to me at night, and, and I never tell anybody about him. Um, but it turns out that this brings me up like well, 10 but average what, happiness. What I would, the other piece you have to add is you can't believe it. I mean, we're, we're not wired in such a way as to be able to believe things we think are false but want to be true uh, knowingly. I mean, we, there's such a thing as self-deception and there are kind of cultures yeah, that... But we're imagine. seemingly wired to believe a lot of things that are probably false. So, that? so we're seemingly wired to believe a lot of things yeah. that are probably yeah. false. And, and it doesn't seem to me that believing these things, it, just because they're not truth tracking, would automatically, even, even sort of well, over time yeah. on a large scale, would always bring misery. It's, an, it's, t it's a totally intelligible claim to say that there are, things, there are ways we could be misled about the nature of reality that in the end would be good for us. I think that's, and, and for someone to say, no, no, it's better just to always know the truth no matter what. I don't think that's an honest position because when you start stacking stuff on the scale of no matter what, you know, okay, everyone's going to die. You know, okay, let's just publish the recipe for synthesized smallpox everywhere and not just publish it, actually just teach everyone how to manufacture it. Why not do that? Well, there are obvious reasons not to do that, but yet that is somehow pre biasing us toward the, the virtue of just free exchange of information. It's, it's, it's privileging information over everything else. It's a stupid thing to do. Why is it stupid? Because it's obviously stupid. I think we should take lunch yeah. on that. No, <laughs>